so uh, I want to review some results about the high energies. I hope that maybe the, that will be interesting to someone. So um, uh, some general phrases. Uh, in additive combinatorics, we have deal with a group, usually a billion, and um, we're interested in all combinatorics that includes uh, the group operation, the addition. Uh, uh, <clears throat> for example, uh, the following central object of additive combinatorics is uh, called the subset of two sets A and B of my billion group. So that is the set of all possible sums. And this central question to um, recognize such sets to find sufficient necessary conditions for a set to be a subset of two uh, sets A and B. Uh, uh, in a similar way, you can go farther and define uh, the k fold subset of A, for example, say 2A minus A is the set of all sums minus. Uh, a1 plus A2 minus A3. And uh, also you can use another operation, say the multiplication, or you can study this operation simultaneously and you can define the product set um, um, and, uh, and so on. So, um, uh, uh, so I want to talk about the high, um, uh, some sets and actually, uh, truly speaking, for me, it's more convenient to deal with uh, the high difference sets. So what is the difference set? Classical difference set is a set of all possible differences of a set of A, but also there is another description of the set. The set um, uh, has form A minus A if, if it is a collection of all shifts uh, from my group G said that we have non-empty intersection of A and each shift A plus X. So you can think that, um, you can think about it as um, uh, an action of your group G on itself by shifts. And now your set uh, A minus A is the, set, is the collection of all shifts said that starting from a point from A, we uh, arrive to another point of A. And of course, if you are speaking about um, uh, actions, then you can consider diagonal actions and so on and so forth. So uh, the many here of my talks, this is the following natural generalization of the different set. Now this is a, a collection of k tuples, x1, xk, say so that this intersection of k1 plus set is non-empty. So this is um, a generalization of A minus A, um, but actually this um, higher dimensional generalization of the different set can be written in terms of classical difference set. It's easy to see that um, this collection of shifts is actually the difference of A to the K, the Cartesian product of my set A to the power of K, minus uh, the following diagonal set dk of a, that is uh, the collection of points uh, a, 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 um, a is a set, is, is, is a point from a. The issue is that the so, did need the prerequisite. Sorry. Okay. So uh, you see um, um, uh, this, uh, higher dimensional difference set is uh, is a difference of it's a very asymmetric difference. The first set here is a massive and very structural set A to the K, the Cartesian product, and this tiny uh, essential one dimensional diagonal set DK of A, and that is why we have so rich combinatorics uh, behind these uh, high difference sets. Um, Yes, and I'm going to talk about these combinatorics and about uh, connected notions uh, to uh, this uh, object. So uh, from the very beginning, I should say that uh, uh, the high difference sets appear naturally in native combinatorics. 
if you remember the classical Rouge's triangle in quality, namely that for any x, for any sets x, y, and z, we have the following bound, then actually uh, you can uh, remember that uh, the proof is just um, an estimation uh, of uh, uh, the size, of the cardinality of this two dimensional different set y times z minus this delta, this diagonal set of x. And uh, actually, we will talk about it later, uh, but actually, this generalized uh, triangle inequality is, um, is, uh, is, is an actual thing for additive combinatorics, namely uh, a multidimensional analog of Rouge's uh, triangle inequality can be proved in a, a simple way, and it, it, it looks like, uh, like this bound if uh, we use this language of high difference sets. Uh, uh, another natural thing about the high difference set that, uh, of course, we know that uh, 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 classical difference sets, they are just projections of the Cartesian product of A cross A, uh, and uh, if you take these uh, uh, this, um, uh, lines, uh, y equals x plus c. The higher dimensional sets is uh, their projections of the Cartesian pros product a to the k along the lines x1 equals k plus s1 and so on, xk equals t plus sk. So this, this is very uh, similar. Um, so, uh, and also I want to say from the very beginning that um, this collection of sets uh, have very interesting and mysterious, even mysterious properties, absolutely non-random properties. Uh, so it, and it would be nice to describe and find all required necessary and sufficient properties for, for uh, a family of set to be or uh, a family of this form, uh, just to show that uh, this is um, uh, this family is absolutely non-random. Uh, consider the simplest case when we have just one intersection. So my k equals one. I consider the intersection of my initial set with its shift as uh, runs or, over the classical set a minus a. Uh, then if uh, this collection of uh, sets AS were a random collection, then say my set A has positive density, right? For simplicity. So if this collection were a random collection, then the intersection of almost all pairs of uh, AS and AT would be uh, non-empty, namely I uh, have <clears throat> the density of this intersection equals uh, the product of densities, right? But uh, in reality, you can easily show that actually almost all intersections of your sets AS and AT are empty, exactly empty. Uh, it's very simple to see from the definition, this intersection uh, is non-empty if and only if S and T belongs to my uh, two-dimensional higher a set of higher differences. And usually for almost all A, you have uh, uh, this bound. So almost all intersections here are, uh, are empty. And uh, that is why we have so many specific properties uh, concerning this uh, family of sets. All right. Um, also another, so I want to, say some general words about high energies and after that we will <clears throat> consider some applications of this method. So another general thing about uh, uh, high energies, uh, you can use usual matrix methods to study uh, this family. For example, one of the ways, one of the possible ways is to consider these uh, strange intersections AS and AT and consider the cardinality of such intersections as 
function in two variables or as a matrix and try to study the spectrum of this method of this matrix it brings us to the eigenvalues method so-called eigenvalues method it turns out that actually uh, this matrix is connected with another classical matrix from number theory and energy combinatorics namely the classical Kelly graph math matrix so let me recall to you that in, um, if you have a set that I can uh, create this Kelly graph, uh, Kelly GA, uh, the vertex set of this graph is the whole group G and Y and X has an edge between them if and only if its difference belongs to my set A. Then it's easy to see that actually uh, uh, this matrix MST is connected to the submatrix of uh, the Kelly graph of my set A. Namely, you need to consider uh, the adjacent symmetric of this graph, consider the square root, and take a submatrix uh, side that uh, X and Y uh, leave in my initial set A. And that's so. So, uh, uh, so. Uh, Precisely, if you consider this submatrix, uh, then the action of this submatrix on uh, uh, the characteristic function of my set A, that is the characteristic function of A, coincides with uh, another well known um, uh, uh, object in additive combinatorics, so called uh, the additive energy of my set A. So uh, and moreover, uh, the spectrum of this, uh, uh, this uh, set matrix of, of Kelly graph coincides with the spectrum of, uh, of, of this matrix M. This is, these were foundations of this uh, simple eigenvalues method. Uh, of course, you can estimate uh, this action via uh, the, uh, the, the variational description of, uh, of uh, eigenvalues. And you see that there is a connection between the main, the largest eigenvalue of your um, uh, eigenvalue of operator of the operator M or T. It's not important, and uh, the uh, the additive energy of my set A. So uh, I'm trying to say that if you can say something about useful about the eigenvalues of your operator, then you can. Uh, say something useful about the additive energy. And that is why there are some applications of this eigenvalues method to additive combinatorics. Uh, another, another simple idea here that um, uh, the additive energy itself can be uh, computed via uh, just Simon, the second moment of uh, these intersections as AS squared. And so it's nature, very natural to consider the, the, the generalization of the high energies, uh, namely when I uh, uh, take a s to the power alpha alpha is uh, uh, any real number. Uh, for example, if you consider the square of all eigenvalues of your previous operator t on and m, then you uh, uh, arrive to uh, the sum of third powers of uh, AS, and then it's called a three energy. It also plays a role in, uh, in, in this circle of problems. So um, also just, 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 just few things uh, left. So also I need to say that there is another very natural uh, uh, generalization of uh, E2 energy, the additive energy, you can consider a K energies when K greater than two. Also, you can uh, consider, uh, you can consider, uh, you can consider uh, another energies uh, very classical energies decay of A, um, where you uh, have just one equation and two K variables, uh, A1, A K, A1 prime, A K prime. So it corresponds 
two projections over hyperplane of k dimension one instead of projection along these lines as we had in uh, in the case of uh, higher energies. So you see here we have dimension one, here we have dimension, uh, co-dimension one. So these objects kind of uh, dual to each other and you can prove that they're uh, dual indeed. There is a connection between TK and uh, e, uh, uh, 2K, say, and even there is a, an uncertain principle that says that either EK is large or TK is large. So this is uh, absolutely two perpendicular, I would say, ways how to generalize the additive energy. Um, uh, the intuition here is absolutely different. We all know that uh, TK of A is difficult to compute when K tends to infinity, but uh, uh, on contrary, when the parameter K tends to infinity, uh, my energies AK became easier to estimate. And the real problem is to estimate ES when S less than two, not, uh, not, not, not tends to infinity. So the last, uh, the last, um, the last, uh, uh, the last introductory slide is the following. Um, uh, of course, if we consider uh, moments of a function, then uh, all these moments are connected via the Helder inequality. But our functions are very specific here. Uh, first of all, we consider the characteristic function of a set, but also we take the convolutions um, of, uh, of these characteristic functions. And the message here that actually there are plenty of non-trivial connections between energies uh, E alpha and e, beta, and e beta for different alpha and beta. For example, uh, one can show that uh, the, 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 there is inbound of this sort for S less than two. And of course, it's not possible to obtain such bounds via Helder inequality because I estimate the, uh, 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 the moment is small s via E2, s less than two. Yes, and uh, finally, another form of this duality is um, uh, so, <clears throat> um, uh, it is the following, so uh, if you consider key intersections and if you compute the Lth power of such intersection, then actually it's a simple lemma. Uh, this is exactly if you consider the Lth intersection and rises to the power of k. It's another form of this duality. Okay, so it's enough to, uh, to say some general uh, words, uh, what about applications? So the first uh, series of applications uh, belongs to the idea of combinatorics, as we have seen before, the classical Rouge triangle inequality is actually two ways to estimate the size of these sets. Uh, the upper bound here is absolutely trivial because you see here we have a one B minus C, C, so that is A minus C, B minus C, and that is of course less than A minus C, B minus C. So the, uh, the upper bound is trivial. And as for the lower bound, we have the precise formula here. And also we can use another trivial bound. So uh, the difference between S and this intersection is at least the size of S, if I take just one point from here. Right, and it gives me uh, the triangle in quality. But of course, this set contains much more information than just Rouge's triangle inequality. Uh, and we were lucky with Thomas Schoen to use this information to improve uh, the triangle inequality in the case of compact conic set. So uh, for any such an A, uh, the measure of A minus A is less than the square of measures of A plus A uh, or mu of A, but also uh, we have this additional square root of N. Uh, there is uh, a well, the well-known uh, problem of Rouge uh, that says that actually uh, 
in the case of a minus a and a plus a, uh, uh, the triangle equality can be proved by some logarithmical factors. And we were able to do, the, to do this, this bound is optimal, by the way. Uh, so maybe it's a, it's a right way to, to, to it's, 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 it's a step to, to, towards uh, uh, the Rouge's question, I would say. All right, so another appearance of this SAS um, uh, comes from uh, the central result in negative combinatorial, so called uh, Cruz Cisas lemma about almost periodicity. Everybody knows this result, uh, so let me remind it quickly. Uh, we have uh, the characteristic function of uh, an average set A, and we consider the convolution of uh, this characteristic function and um, uh, an average function F. Suppose that uh, A has small doubling in a sense, then this convolution has a huge set of almost periods in LP sense. It means that I can uh, shift my convolution uh, by an element of T and the difference is small uh, in the sense of LP norm. And uh, this mysterious set of almost periods is actually just uh, um, uh, 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 just um, just our sets AS. More precisely, we need to take a half of uh, uh, this set AS for typical uh, shift uh, S1, S, S, SK. And hence, you see, if we have some additional information about the structure of such intersection, then we would automatically uh, say something about this set of almost periods and hence uh, to all, say, structural results in edit combinatorics and so on and so forth. Uh, another classical result is um, the classical bulk semi theorem. Uh, this uh, result can be considered as a, as a, a statement about connection, the connection relation between uh, E2 energy, the additive energy, and the trivial energy, E0 energy, that is uh, just the cardinality of my set A. Uh, so uh, the Bugs and Redigar's theorem says that if the energy, uh, the additive energy is large, so if uh, uh, the uh, additive energy is large comparable to the size of A, that is uh, the zero energy of A, Right, uh, so the value of my additive energy is close to the maximum value, right? Uh, then in this critical situation, this specific situation, we know the structure of my set A, namely there is a huge subset of A, polynomially large subset of A, such that this subset A star has small W. So the natural question arises, are there any relations, connections between other pairs of energies? Not E0 and, and E2, but others. And there, are, uh, there is a serious result in this direction. Let me formulate the, the most um, uh, applicable one, so-called E2, E3 theorem. So here we compare, we have deal with two energies, uh, E2 and E3, and of course they are connected with the Heldron inequality. But uh, the question is, uh, 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 is the following. Uh, suppose that we can kind of reverse the Heldron inequality. Suppose that we have not uh, this trivial lower bound, but uh, a similar upper bound for say E three energy of A, as it it, it, it we, um, had in the case of the bulk semi Gauss theorem. So, is it possible to describe the situation? Is it possible to describe uh, the family of all sets A having this uh, this uh, property? And the answer is the following: uh, Not A star has small doubling, but I can find a huge subset of A such that A star minus A star. This is different set that can be large comparable to A star, by the way. So uh, A star minus A star has small doubling. And this is a criterion. Uh, 
uh, the point here that this is a criterion, this is the only case when we have uh, such relations. So the precise result is the following. Uh, uh, the additive energy is large, the E3 energy is uh, so large, then it's possible to have this situation if and only if there is a huge subset of a star such that after one addition of a star, we can have a, a set of flush doubling, but after further additions, we stop uh, growing. All right. So another another uh, application <clears throat> of these high energies um, is uh, a new bound for uh, another classical object uh, from a to Kanatorx, so called the cover number. So Suppose my uh, group G is a finite one and I want to cover, so having a set A, I want to cover the whole group G uh, using shifts of my set A. So I want to find a uh, minimal set X such that A plus X equals G. So the minimal, the size of minimum of this minimal X is the current uh, number of uh, my set A. And it's easy to see that the current number is greater than G over K and use some probability uh, uh, argument, simple probability argument, you can show that um, uh, there is this upper bound. So this uh, logarithm can be considered as a measure of um, of um, uh, of uh, randomness of your set A. If the current number is small, then your set has some structural properties. If not, then maybe uh, you can think about your set as a set uh, close to a random one. And using these high energies, we uh, be able to compute the cover numbers of any sum set. The cover number of A plus B uh, can be estimated in this way. You uh, This bound is sharp, even this one is needed here. Uh, yeah, it was one application. And the last application in, in, uh, for additive combinatorics, and uh, this application shows uh, uh, us um, the gist of these high energies we consider uh, high moments of my sets AS and hence we work with sets of measure zero because usually high moments live on sets of measure zero on large values of my function, right? So um, uh, the tra transparent example here is the following. Uh, the uh, average value of uh, uh, the size of these sets AS is a squared um, uh, over a minus a, right? But we were able to show uh, with Sevalev that actually you can always find a, a set AS such that this bound is uh, uh, twice larger than than um, the bound that you can use um, that you can obtain using the average the two average argument, and this two is is is, is tight. So you see, we used um, uh, the high energies method, and actually, the this AS is kind of typical, but from the point of view of high energies, not from the point of view of uh, L one of uh, this simple L one uh, estimate. And um, uh, uh, and uh, we find this uh, uh, surprisingly large intersections uh, AS. They form a set of measure zero, but as I said before, from the point of view of high energies, uh, they kind of typical. And it allows us to uh, apply these results to, uh, to obtain some new <clears throat> uh, improvements of uh, frame on uh, 3K minus four theorem in the prime fields. So uh, another series of applications, um, uh, 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 this is uh, the sum product phenomenon. So, Anderson um, uh, uh, says the ready. Okay, uh, uh, suggested to consider uh, these two sets simultaneously: a plus a and a times a. It's very easy to construct set with small uh, sum set and with small product set, but simultaneously, it's very difficult for a set to be close to 
set a geometric progression you can do arithmetic progression so that is the conjecture the maximum of a plus eight i say must grow um, uh, in an optimal way that is a squared minus epsilon and even this weaker result that was proved by uh, Erdős and Semenedi is called uh, some product phenomenon. You see this maximum growth uh, as a to the one plus c. So we have an exponential growth here. And uh, this is very important phenomenon, a gold mine, as Burgan once said, uh, with a lot of applications to number theory, to economics, dynamical systems, cryptography, and so on. So uh, um, um, uh, we were uh, lucky with Sergei Kanyagin to obtain um, uh, the following result uh, for uh, this maximum. It has uh, uh, the form A to the 4 over 3. It comes from a beautiful uh, uh, argument of uh, Joseph Scholmerschen. But this um, high energies method allows us to improve it uh, by constant and all modern results uh, have the same form. So the best result here belongs to Rudy uh, uh, Stevens and the same method uh, works in FP as well. That is the best result in the direction if A is a subset of um, a fine field. I should say that um, uh, the improvement of this constant is not just interesting in its own right, but uh, the existence of this positive constant uh, leads us to some no new, uh, principally new results in additive chemotropes. And I will give you some examples. So it's not just about constant, it's, it's kind of a uh, crucial step. Uh, so another example, uh, rather recent example uh, about classical uh, collection of sets uh, <clears throat> in uh, uh, usual uh, additive combinatorics. Uh, so uh, uh, a set is called um, uh, a certain set if uh, this equation has um, uh, trivial solutions only. So that is uh, this equation implied that A equals C, B equals D. Or, uh, in other words, if I consider this equation with minuses, it's more convenient for me to work with differences, then this um, uh, equation has just um, trivial solutions. So if this equation has a more G solution, then I say that uh, my set S belongs to this family C and G. And there is a classical very known result known uh, topic uh, about um, finding a maximal student subset uh, of a given set so I have a set a and I try to find the maximal student subset of my set a and uh, uh, there is a classical result of uh, Colmer, uh, Shiyok, and uh, Semeridi uh, that say that it's always possible to find a certain subset of size square root of A. My student Semchenkov uh, computed this constant using some additional ideas here. And uh, it was a question of Klurman of Pahata uh, who says that. Uh, okay, let us uh, look at this problem uh, from the point of view of the sum product phenomenon, and let us try to find either uh, 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 large uh, additive student uh, set or multiplicative one. And they suggested that uh, this maximum must be greater than square root of a. And uh, there are some results in this direction, some upper bounds. Uh, Green, Pelus, Russian, Newton, uh, Warren, and me. And uh, so uh, we were able to prove uh, the following uh, uh, theorem if I have uh, a, a, a subset of reals or if I work uh, in finite fields, then this maximum C don't K, uh, C don't K uh, uh, star is greater than square root of a plus c uh, and c and k are some absolute constant here there are some improvements with mugdal and uh, jim Mogul. 
So the most impo important and interesting thing here that this result is just uh, an application of uh, general theory about these high energies. As I said to you, uh, when my parameter k tends to infinity, then this energy k became easier to estimate. And so for, uh, for larger k, it was, it is always possible to uh, show that either we have an optimal up of the bound for the k of a, or the structure of my set A is very precise. Basically, my set A is just uh, the sum set of a set H that is a set of small doubling and uh, some sh random shifts around it. So uh, it, this is a structural result. Actually, uh, it's a criterion. Uh, so either we have an optimum bound for EK for large K or the structure of A is very precise. And uh, now I want to show you some uh, examples of uh, the existence, uh, uh, some consequences of the existence of this constant C here. Uh, right, so, um, uh, uh, so uh, the first example, this is a theorem with Zelezov. Uh, <clears throat> we were lucky to find a new necessary condition for a set to be a subset. We proved that if you uh, take any set B and C of size is greater than one, of course, then any subset B plus C must grow under multiplication. So B plus C times B plus C is greater than, than B plus C. Uh, um, uh, in the power one plus C star. C is an absolute constant that depends on all uh, previous improvements. Uh, so, yeah. So you see it's kind of new property. Uh, this result is unknown in FP. Uh, we know that uh, the same is true uh, if you take just A minus A and A minus A. Right, so another uh, new result uh, that follows from the existence of this uh, C uh, in uh, uh, the semi-radio uh, semi uh, theorem, uh, this is a new result about additive decomposition of sets. Uh, we know just few things about additive decompositions. For example, we don't know, is it true that the primes can be represented as B plus C in a trivial way? Uh, this is a classical uh, question of Ostman. So Sharkers uh, suggested even more model and um, uh, it may be simple uh, problem about representing uh, multiplicatively uh, rich sets as quadratic residuals or arithmetic progressions. And we were able to prove that any multiplicative subgroup of size P to the two minus three cannot be represented as B plus C in a non-trivial way. And again, uh, here I used some uh, technique from the sum prod. So another series of applications to number theory uh, all we know that uh, thanks to Fermat Lister's theorem that this quantity is an integer, but what about the distribution of these integers? Uh, for example, if, if I think about these integers as uh, elements of a few, are they uh, uniformly distributed or not? Or not? Uh, so the distribution is controlled by Hilbron exponential sums. And it was Heath Brown who proved, uh, who, who was first who proved this, uh, uh, and who obtained the uh, not trivial upper bound for the Heath Brown exponential sums. After that, this result was improved by Kanyagin, viewing Slatkova. Yeah. And again, using the high energies method, uh, you can obtain this, uh, uh, this result here. Uh, this is the best result at the moment. And uh, of course, this set uh, n to the p, this, this powers n to, to the p, uh, suggests 
you to consider a more general question about distribution of multiplicative subgroups because you see this gamma, this Kelbron subgroup gamma is a subgroup. Yes, and again, using this high energies method, you can uh, you can obtain some new results for exponential sums of subgroups. Uh, if we consider a dual question, namely, if we uh, want to study multiplicative characters, then it turns out that this method is also uh, can help. Uh, so uh, this method is applicable for sums uh, uh, of the following form. They are connected uh, with the so-called Kelly graph conjecture. We expect that these sums uh, uh, enjoy uh, an non-trivial exponential saving for any sets A and B of size greater than P to the epsilon. But uh, actually this question is open uh, even at a combinatorial level. So that is uh, so-called the product sum conjecture. <clears throat> Suppose that I have a set of a P of size greater than P to the epsilon. And now I consider first uh, some sums of my set A. After that, I take the power and I divide by the same. So is it true that having any set A, I can find N such that this um, uh, object equals the, the whole field? Uh, this is open even if my uh, A has size greater than slightly less than square root of P, say small o of square root of P. Uh, this conjecture implies Vinogradov conjecture, so it's a very difficult question. And uh, we were able to, it was uh, asked by Balak in some uh, variants, and we were able to show him to, uh, to break this uh, square root barrier a little bit and show that any set, uh, set of size square root of P times this uh, sub exponential bound. Uh, 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 enjoy this uh, conjecture, you can take n equals uh, three, more or less. All right, so uh, the last uh, series of applications to Fourier analysis. So say we have an, a finite abelian group or not finite, we can consider the Fourier transform. Uh, so C is an element of the dual group. And uh, there is a number of uncertainty principles on G that assert that a function and its Fourier transform cannot be simultaneously highly concentrated. The simplest uh, uncertainty principle is the following the product of the support of F and the support of its Fourier transform uh, cannot be simultaneously small. It's worth to mention the classical Heisenberg inequality, right? Uh, but um, in the high energies method, we work with the different sets. And uh, that is why it, it, it's natural to ask the same question about, uh, about say, uh, convolutions uh, or intersections of shifts of A. And we were able to obtain the following rather recent result. So suppose that I have a set A with small doublings, say, uh, with density delta. And um, I take, uh, I study these intersections as always, and uh, I take um, the maximum of not all non trivial intersections of this form. And also I take the Fourier transform of this convolution, right? So I take a, a hat squared, then the product of uh, the intersection and the, the, the Fourier transform is large. Uh, that is our result. Uh, um, this bound is optimal. Uh, uh, this, this power of k is optimal one. So I have uh, five or four minutes and let me say a few wor words about very recent results uh, and how they, they connected with the higher moments. So uh, it was a striking result of Kelly Mecca who proved that any set, uh, any subset of uh, the first n integers have an arithmetic progression of length three 
uh, enjoyed the following sub-exponential bound for its density. So size of A is less than N times uh, X, uh, some power of logarithm. So the proof used uh, the higher uh, energies. Uh, so they considered so-called balance functions uh, uh, the balance function of my set A, and they computed uh, the EK uh, of A uh, of F energy. Now K is a growing parameter; it's not a fixed number. Uh, uh, it goes to infinity uh, as the density of A tends to zero. And they use some duality, uh, some very intricate and uh, delicate properties of, of the high energies and obtain uh, uh, this result. But there is a problem here, a very interesting attractive problem. As we have seen, uh, the high energies uh, work on a set of measure zero. So uh, the question is, is it possible to obtain an analytic analog of this, uh, of this theory? So the concrete question is the following. Uh, so suppose that uh, I have a set <clears throat> of say positive den density, one dimensional set for simplicity. And uh, is it possible to uh, find a partition of uh, the first and integers into arithmetic progression and uh, the, uh, this exceptional set omega? said that first of all, omega is small, the number of uh, arithmetic progression is controllable by all parameters, and, uh, uh, and uh, the high energy of the balance, the balance function of the intersection of A with each PJ is small in the Kelly mega sense. So can I regularize any set or any function uh, in the sense of Kelly Mega. Uh, if you use the classical Fourier analysis, of course, there are such results uh, of this sort. So for K equals two, this is known, this is just L2 increment, but it's, all, it's absolutely unclear. Is it uh, true that you obtain this result for high energies? Because as I said to you, they act on sets of measure zero. So maybe this is possible, maybe not. It, it's very interesting. And another, uh, and another uh, this is the last slide. So another beautiful theorem of Gauss, Green, uh, Manners, and Dale uh, towards um, the polynomial of Ryman Ruger conjecture for any Athenian group. So they prove that if I have uh, an abelian group uh, distortion M, then actually the structure of any set with small Dublin uh, can be uh, described. So A is covered by this polynomial with small number of cosets of a subgroup uh, H from my group. So the main, uh, one of the main uh, steps in the proof is so-called fiber and lemma. And uh, in this fiber and lemma, uh, uh, the authors uh, um, uh, found a connection between the entropy distances of the sets A, A minus A, and AS. So uh, I should say that the first result in the direction at the, uh, level, at the energy level was obtained by Kaska Esten. Uh, um, one of the model form is the following, that is just this inequality, a to the eighth uh, less than uh, e4 of a, a, uh, a minus a. So you see we have here uh, our, uh, our set a, uh, our set a minus a, and also this sets a s because the e4 energy is just um, this average of, uh, of the common energies. So, and you see the problem with this result that, that um, um, uh, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, uh, it's a very, it's, it, it is stronger than uh, an, uh, an, entropy, an entropy version of fiber and lemma, but unfortunately this result is very asymmetric. You see here we have on the 
left hand side we have zero energy here we have e4 energy and here we have e2 energy and of course it's it's not possible to iterate this lemma to use induction and so on and so forth so uh Garth, Green, Manus, and Tau were uh, able to to connect uh, all these energies uh, using this tool uh, the entropy that can be considered as the energy of the form uh, E1 plus epsilon. Epsilon is the logarithm. So I think it would be very interesting to obtain uh, further, uh, even deeper relations between uh, between A, A minus A and AS at the level of energies. I, I would say that it, 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 shed, it would shed uh, the light on, on, on this proof and uh, 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 would help uh, in, 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 a, in some concrete applications. I think that's all. Thank you for your attention.